Welcome to the Bold Life Movement Podcast. I'm your host, Kimberly Rich, and each week I bring you inspiring stories from real people to help you live a more passionate and intentional life. You'll learn how to up-level in everything from relationships, entrepreneurship and leadership, to spirituality, sexuality, and yes, even money. If you're interested in raising your game to be a better business owner, a better lover, and a happier, more fulfilled human, then you're in the right place. No more living on autopilot. You are just an episode away from a bolder, better, more fulfilling life. Welcome back to the Bold Life Movement Podcast. This is episode number 78. And this week I'm chatting with serial entrepreneur and the man behind jasondoesstuff.com, Mr. Jason Zook. Jason, I first found you when your book, Do It Differently, came up on my Instagram feed. It must be because I follow Caroline, your wife. And so I was like, do it differently. Like that speaks to me. So I want to kick it off by letting you introduce what that book is and what's come from it. So this is where most people would be like, okay, here's the book. Like, it's really easy to describe. It's a book and blah, blah, blah. It's not really easy for me to describe. Uh, (laughs) And I will explain why it's not easy. So this is my second book. I wrote my first book in 2014. It was called Creativity for Sale. And it was basically chronicling the first five years of my entrepreneurial journey up until that point. And so I've done a bunch of crazy projects. I got paid to wear t-shirts for a living. I sold my last name. There was a lot of stuff I could talk about. And I ran a business into the ground, got into debt, found minimalism. Like, there's a lot of life stuff too. Some so of which we I, will touch on, by the way. Yes. So I knew that when I was writing that book that I had this plan to write a book every couple of years to kind of keep people kind of on this journey of an entrepreneur because I hadn't seen anybody do that. And a lot of times my wife and I, Caroline, who we'll talk a lot about, I'm sure, um, we we do things that we wish we would see more of in the world. That's mm-hmm. kind of one of our mindsets is like, I wish more people would do this. Well, if we're saying that, then we should probably do that. Mm-hmm. Um so this book, Do It Differently, has been in my mind as I've been working the past couple of years. And a year and a half ago, I wrote the first draft, but I wrote it publicly. So I had a website build called watchmewrite.co. And you could watch for 14 days. I wrote the first draft of this book just open for the public to view. And it was really cool. Like I had an editor built. I actually invested money in having this thing built. It was like a yeah. little app. Um, I couldn't see the chat while I was typing because I would have been completely, I would never have written anything. Totally. Um, but every, yeah, every day from 9 to 1, 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., I sat down 14 days straight, typed out words. They were terrible. They were just awful. Uh, but people watched and tens of thousands of people from around the world watched. It was really cool. Um, and it gave me something kind of fun at the end of every writing session to look forward to, to go in and like I could read back through the chat. It was fun to see people like leaving comments, you know, yeah. throughout at different parts where like, oh, he's stuck again. Like, how's he getting, you know, like, where did he go? He stopped typing because I wouldn't type in the draft like, hey, I have to go pee. You know, like I just <laughs> have to go. Anyway, the very long winded way to say I wrote this first draft in a very weird way. Wait, um, now could they go- see what you were writing? Oh, yeah. Every single word. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Every So that was the first whole point. First draft whole is point. such shit. Though. Yeah, it's terrible. It's bad. And that's that's actually a big reason why I decided to do it because I wanted to show everybody like it's okay if you show people your first draft. Like no one's going to judge you by it, especially if you set the expectation of, hey guys, this is my shitty first draft. And this is what you, you know, it's not going to end up like this by any means because it would be a horrible, horrible book. So I finished the first draft, uh, had an editor go do a full pass kind of let it sit for a couple months because I wanted it to just marinate in my mind. Um, My wife took a full pass. Another editor who edits all my articles took a pass. So we're on like multiple drafts now. Uh, And then I had this idea at the end of last year to go one step further with this project. Again, like we're just talking about a book, like a nonfiction book that's being written. Uh, But I can't do things the same way that people do them, hence the book title, Do It Differently. Um, I launched this website called dearbookpublisher.com. And the whole idea was... I self-published my first book. It worked really well. I had some sponsorship stuff throughout the book, which was kind of fun. So Mm -hmm. it made money, uh, which most books don't. And this time around, I really wanted the story of working with a traditional publisher, but in a different way, because it's perfect for the book. Like there's a whole chapter I'm going to write about this journey, which is fun. So I put this website out. It basically, at the top of it said, dear book publisher or book agent, comma. And I wrote to these fictitious people that I didn't know and, and, it's kind of like a public book proposal. Yeah. And I had like a little trailer that I made about the project. I wrote who the book was for. I got some testimonials from my audience, which was really cool. I got like a hundred and I didn't think I was going to get that many because wow. no one had read any. Well, people read that first draft, but that was a year before that. So I didn't expect anybody to remember. And it was the first well, draft. 
Yeah, it's terrible. Um, long story made short on that part of this journey, uh, I ended up signing with a literary agent um, at the end of it, which literally as we're recording this was just a couple days ago. And so now we start the process of actually building a real book proposal going to traditional publishers. Um, and I'm just excited because and the, be the do it differently. Book. That is, that's no, that's this book, do it differently. So I've fully written the book. It's fully edited. And now we're going to publishers saying like, this thing's like pretty much done. Do you want it? Do you want to make some tweaks? Um, and I really, the reason why I chose the agent was because she read the book in two days. She really loved it. She loved the conversational style of the writing. There's a little alien character named Roy who's going to be featured throughout the book that we like did an illustration of him already. Um, and so she just got it. She got the whole picture and she really felt like, hey, we're not going to have to rewrite this whole book. Like there's a little couple little things here and there, yeah. but a publisher is going to want to kind of massage it and move it. Are you okay with that? I was like, yeah, totally. That's fine. So we're, we're a year and a half in to do it differently. It, ex it exists only in a digital format. I have, it's funny. I actually have uh, the mock up here, not because I knew we were going to talk about it, just because I'm so damn proud. I just happened to have this. <laughs> yeah, but it's not my book on the inside. That's what's funny. It's like, this is just someone else's book. <laughs> <laughs> we just made a mock-up of the cover. Um, but I'm super proud of it. Like I'm I'm proud of the design, all the work yeah. that's gone into it. But I know we still like cover. have another there's like another year involved in this project. Wow. So when so this, I read the update, because I, I knew you had landed an agent. Um yep. spoiler. And when I read that update, I misunderstood. I thought that you got an um a publisher for the next book out of this mm -mm. project. Mm -mm. So this whole project is so like sit tight, everyone. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, if you're listening to this and you're just you're like, I just want to write a book and put it on Amazon. You can do that. That's easy. That, that that's absolutely doable. But I want this story. Like, I like this crazy, weird twist and turn, different ideas. Um, you know, I'm not a well-known author. My first book didn't hit any bestseller lists at all. But the, you can still do these things if you just twist the knobs and think about things differently and position it differently. And you attract the right people who like that stuff. Um, and for me, that's kind of my entire ethos of everything that I do. And, and it just, it's the only way that I know to do things where I feel fulfilled by the project, whether it's successful monetarily or not. Like, I just right. feel like I get so much fulfillment from doing this differently, getting a book deal this way. Like, it makes me feel really good about it, so. Yeah, and that's super, why I was drawn to it. What's, no, no, I want all the details. <laughs> okay. um, I could honestly sit on these interviews all day, so it's yeah. good that G. Cal puts a limit on it. Um, <laughs> but, okay, for someone who, A, has purchased Finish Your Damn Book, but no longer has access, and uh, don't you worry and uh and is fifty thousand words into her first book but can't seem to f freaking finish it what would you say um have you worked with an editor at all no you need an editor not yet even though the it's not done yeah it doesn't matter writing a book needs an editor for sure. Mm. Because you need someone, and, and I love this phrase, I steal this phrase from my buddy Paul Jarvis, is that you can't see the label from a, from inside the jar. Mm. So even with this book, Do It Differently, like I had a whole idea of how this book was going to go. And then my editor took a pass and I was like, oh, that's how it's going to go. And then my structural editor who I write my stuff for, she was like, oh, I think it should go this way. And then my wife, Caroline, who's an amazing writer herself, was like, yeah. okay, I'm taking all this stuff and we're making this an awesome book. And she did. Like I've read it. It's it's really great. Like sometimes I'm reading, I'm like, this is my book. Like I like we I don't it's mostly because Caroline like helped it, it should be co authored by her. Oh yeah. And it should be co authored by her, but she doesn't want it to be. But I'm gonna like like in the last final edit of it without her seeing, I'm just gonna be like, just put co authored like somewhere <laughs> in the book. So. Um, but yeah, so that, that is my answer to you is, is get an editor and mm -hmm. you don't have to pay an editor thousands of dollars. I mean, you can get someone just to help you. A, a structural editor, um, can be really helpful or even just a book coach. You know, there's yeah. a lot of people out there who are book coaches. And here's the thing I think about this with, with any project I work on is that if you're not willing to invest in the project, then you should be okay with mediocre results or no results mm -hmm. because and investment doesn't mean you have to invest money, but I think it, it means time. I think it means when you get to a certain like roadblock, you have to do something that you can't do to get over those things. Um, and, and that to me is just, that's the mark of a good entrepreneur. That's the good mark of a good business owner, a good yeah. mark of a creative is that you're willing to go, Hey, you know what? I'm not smart enough. And I'm really speaking about myself to do whatever needs to be done. I need someone to help me here. Yeah. Okay. Who's that person? How can I outsource this and, and get that help done? 
Well, and it's I think that would, Yeah, it would give you the motivation too, where someone would come in and they go, "Hey, uh, you got a good thing here. I like this chapter. These three suck. Um, you know, I'd love for you to elaborate on this story." And then you go, "Oh, okay, I can do all those things." Yeah. You know, totally doable. Now I have some next steps as opposed to you just looking at 50,000 words you've cranked out going, now what? And yeah. that's just a difficult part of the book writing process. And I don't know if you experienced this when you picked the book back up, but I started it, you know, over a year and a half ago. And I'm like, is that yeah. how I talked? Is that yeah. how I wrote then? Some of it I'm like, dang girl. And other things I'm like, that's too much. <laughs> so having when someone I... kind of hone the voice. Yep. When I was uh, about to write the first draft of Do It Differently, which with the Watch Me Write project, I read Creativity for Sale, my first book, and it was cringeworthy, the yeah. whole book. You and said I still get, yeah, I still get positive reviews. I still get like five star. The book really only has five star reviews, which is insane to me because it's not, <laughs> it's not five star book. Um, but it, it doesn't matter how I view it. Like we're yeah. all going to look at our art in whatever that is, our creations, our business, everything with this like super like lens of, oh, this is wrong. I misspelled a word. Somehow we didn't catch it. No one cares. You know, they just like the whole story to them is what's inspiring them or motivating them. Yeah. 100%. Well, you mentioned some of your earlier projects and I kind of want to dive a little bit more into those just because they're, they're all so different and they're all so unique. What are a couple that stand out or what was one that was really, really fun and uh, you just look back on and you're like, that was, that was a dope time in my life. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's hard to pick from your, your children, you know, like I have all these things. Um, yeah. I'll go with, I'll go with by my last name because I think that one was just, it was so bizarre. It was yeah. so far out there. It was such a weird thing. So, uh, in 2012, my mom sent me a text message and was like, Hey, can you hop on Skype? My mom has never asked me to hop on Skype. And I was like, Oh, this is weird. Yeah. And we hop on Skype and I can see that she's crying when I get on the call. And I'm like, Oh no, like what is going on? Like my mind's racing. And she's like, your stepfather and I are getting a divorce. They'd been together for 13 years. I had taken his last name. Uh, you know, he'd been my dad you know, for the good, good majority of my formative years. Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't super close to him, uh, cause I had had three fathers up to that time, but it's 13 years of someone being yeah. in your life, you know? And, and so she was, you know, telling me kind of the circumstances and they weren't really great. And I always break, uh, tension or emotional struggle with humor. It's just like natural to me. I can't like with, there's obviously if I lay down on a couch and someone's like, let's talk about this. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just, <laughs> yeah, I just can't deal. Um, and I was like, all right, well, I want to divorce his last name too. So I'm going to go to the courthouse and ditch this last name. And my mom kind of laughed and then I laughed and then I couldn't stop thinking about that. And I was like, okay, but you no, know, seriously, like I want a different last name. Like I don't want this guy's last name anymore, but what do I choose? Mm. Like, I, you know, like most people have had a last name their entire life. So that defines them. That's yeah. who they are. That's their lineage. I didn't want that. So I had just come off this I Wear Your Shirt project. It was just winding down where I had been paid to wear t-shirts for all these different brands and companies um, before social media influencer was a thing. Yeah. And I was like, I'm pretty good at getting sponsorships and I have a lot of companies that kind of follow my weird things that I do. Maybe someone will want to sponsor my last name for a year. It could just be kind of fun. Um, somehow the domain buy my last name was available. No one was smart wow. enough to buy that before me. I know. It's great. And the dot com. In 2012? Right? Yeah. What are we doing? Uh, this <laughs> opportunity by everybody else. Everyone. Uh, so I quickly looked up like the legal part of this. Like, can you have a brand's last name? All this stuff, which really was just me Googling. And then like, I found nothing. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I did fine. extensive but, research. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Second page of Google. I yeah. went all the way to the second page, <laughs> super deep into the catacombs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, so I was just like, okay, I'm going to do this. Uh, I told Caroline, who was my girlfriend at the time, now wife. And she was like, sure. Like you've done a whole bunch of weird stuff. Who cares at this point? Yeah. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not a final thing. It's not a forever thing. So we just decided to go forward with this. It wouldn't be a forever thing. I could set parameters on, you know, it's not like Pornhub would buy my last name. You know, like I yeah. could choose what companies I would allow. So I had a website built, uh, had a developer that built basically like an eBay style auction for this. And my intention was, okay, I'll put this up for 30 days. I'll start it at $0. Mm -hmm. um, I'll send it to my interested email list at the time, which truthfully, I all I did was send an email to my main list, which is my I rear shirt list, which was like 20,000 people, which you would say like, oh, okay, cool. You're going to get a lot. But I didn't want to send it to all of them because I knew it wasn't super appropriate. So I said, hey, if you're interested, yeah. subscribe to this. Only 600 people like signed up for that thing. So I only sent it to 600 people. I didn't send it to the full list because I just didn't want to like come off spammy or whatever. Right. Um, 
And so I launched this thing. My personal goal on like my my inside my heart was like, if I make five thousand dollars, this is a win. You know, it's a little bit of money. Uh, it's a funny thing. Like I have no clue why anybody would buy my last name. Yeah. Um, and in the first day, the bidding went from zero to thirty three thousand dollars. Yeah, your scream oh. emoji face that you just <laughs> did is exactly what I did too. Yeah, <laughs> it was insane. I, I watched the bids come in. I watched the thing, and I think it was like, it was only like thirty bids in that first day too of people Who that had done people? it. So. Huh? I know that that was insane. And I didn't know. I mean, I knew probably five of the people who bid. And and so this is one of those ideas that, you know, no one has really done this before. No one had done it like this at all. Do it differently. Um, and so it got passed around. I mean, it got a ton of got a ton of traffic, got a ton of uh, people sharing it all over the place. Yeah, I, I remember it. From- yeah, it was crazy. I mean, yeah. it was on all the advertising blogs. It was on a couple different news outlets in the beginning. Um, so the bidding ended at $45,500. And funny enough, I was getting a phone call from the CMO of the company that ended up winning the bid. And he was like, Jason, first of all, I need to make sure you're not like some Nigerian prince who's trying to pull one over on everybody. And I was like, no, I am an American prince and I'm not, you know, <laughs> just send me the money via Western Union and we'll be good. Yeah. Um, and he was like, okay, fine. And he was like, can you end the auction now? Like my budget for this stupid idea was $40,000. Like I got my boss to say, I will pay 40,000. And it was up to like 44 and they had become the high bid again. And I think there was like 20 minutes left. And I was like, I can't, like I, ethically, I just can't do that. He was like, ah, fine. And so, uh, so they ended up winning. <laughs> Headsets.com was the company that won. And they're basically like the Zappos of headsets. Okay. Like office headsets, like they just own it. They do incredible customer service. I went and visited their office. Their CEO is awesome. Um, but anyway, they're like the <laughs> they running joke. They didn't pay me to say all this. <laughs> no, not at all. Seriously, they're, they're a great company. Um, their CMO is like, I basically pulled like $5,000 out of like another budget like to be able to afford your last name. Um, so. But it paid off for them. They, they ended up getting, you know, there was a story on USA Today on the homepage. There was a story in the New York Times. There was, you know, it was all over the place yeah. and the earned media alone they were like we got like three million dollars in earned media and they yeah. track all that stuff so they're like this was incredibly worth it they saw a huge sales spike in their first six months of the year uh so it worked out really well for them and the project for me was just really funny it was so like the hardest there were two difficult parts of this number one going down to the actual courthouse i lived in florida at the time sitting in front of a judge like in a courtroom <laughs> where there's like divorce case and child custody and like you know real battery. things and then there's this idiot i'm pointing at me who's like i just want to change my name because someone gave me forty five thousand dollars for it and you know like i didn't even want to say words out loud that's how embarrassed yeah. i was in that room but i sit in front of the judge and he was like headsets.com huh you sure you want to do this <laughs> and i was like yeah yes your honor i do and he was like all right stamps it and like moved on You're and like- the second was trying to change it on my damn Delta Sky Miles account. I was going to ask, like, passport. Uh, passport, I didn't change. So oh. when Caroline and I talked about this, I was essentially like, hey, we're not traveling abroad for two years. It also helped that at that time we were almost $100,000 in debt. So we didn't have any means to be traveling world travels anyway. Yeah. But I just kind of was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm not going to go through the passport thing because that is forever going to live with me of like, why does this guy have six last names? Uh, which I do now at this point. And like I just all the red flags. Uh, but Delta Sky Miles, I changed it on there. And that I should have just left because those people were idiots. Like it was every single flight was just a complete nightmare trying to be like, what is this? You know, what are you, who are you? Like, yeah, what's, yeah. this is McLovin. What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was on my driver's license. So like, I, you know, I actually showed that. But also fun fact in Florida, you can have 88 characters in your last name. Holy so go nuts. Do the you? things you learn, the things you learn, you know, Yeah, I never my listeners never would have known that. And now that they've listened to that, they can be like, the rest of my day is done. Like I have <laughs> everything I need for everything in my life. And so what last name does Caroline have? I mean, Zook, yeah, so but who's Caroline that? had yeah, Caroline had her own last name for her entire life, like normal people. Mm-hmm. So I went through headsets.com and then sold my last name one more time for the cover area of creativity for sale, my book. Fairly. So that was just Surfer App was my Surfer App. Surfer App was my last name. Not a piece of IKEA furniture, an actual app for surfing. It was like Yelp for surfing. Still exists. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, but people would ask, and I eventually just got tired of like saying the normal thing. So I just be like, yeah, it's a piece of Ikea furniture. I'm very inspired by Swedish uh, modern <laughs> architecture. Um, and 
so once that second year finished, I knew I wasn't going to sell my last name again, even though I had companies emailing me and saying like, oh, we'll pay you $50,000 to do it. I was like, I'm good. Like I've, this has run its course. Like I'm not just doing this for money. I'm doing it for the story and for the fun. And, and for me, like once an idea gets to a certain point, like it's not different anymore, yeah. you know, like I, I want to do it. Um, so I kind of was met with this same thing I was met with in 2012, like crap, like now what do I do? You know, I have to pick a last name. Um, and I just started thinking about like lineage and my family. And so maybe I would take my grandparents last name because they had been together for a long time and they had had, you know, one name. And then it, I found that my great grandfather was an entrepreneur and started a power company back in the sixties and seventies and won the Nikolai Tesla award for his work in the power industry wow. as an entrepreneur. And I was like, well, yeah, that yeah. sounds awesome. I want to carry that name forward. So his last name was Zook, and Zook or Zook, however you want to pronounce it. In, Can in uh, Canada, Zook. Here in America, Zook, I guess. Okay. Um, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But yeah, so that was the last name. Super proud to be able to carry his lineage forward because so it actually cool. passed with him. No one had that last name. And just the cool story of, of his work. And so now Caroline, when we got married uh, last year uh, in March, she was excited because everyone gets her last name wrong. Her previous last name was Weingart. Hard to spell, hard to pronounce, hard to say. Zook, you can only, like, it's just two different pronunciations. Like, yeah. no one's ever like, oh, is this Zukovic? Like, what are you doing? You just added, like, a whole other <laughs> last name. Just stop. Just stop doing that. So, yeah. Do less. Both very happy with a short, easy last name. That'll be the forever from here. I love it. So, you mentioned the debt a little bit earlier. And I, I read the article or one of the articles on your site yes. about that. Can you just kind of give me the highlights of how you faced it and the fun way that you guys gamified yourselves out of it? The low lights? <laughs> Probably more yeah. the low lights. Yeah, because I no, know, it, you know, I, like, it is, I've I actually debt. like, That's, everyone has. So everyone has experienced debt. It is something that is just so pervasive in our full global economy, our full global society. And to be embarrassed about it and ashamed of it is just such the wrong way to, to tackle it. And that's where we were. So in 2013, I shut down my Irish shirt business. Um, I had eight employees. I had to let all of them go, including my wife, Caroline, who worked for me at the time. And that was not as awkward as you probably think because she saw the writing on the wall. She saw how stressed I was trying to keep everything afloat, borrowing money from family, putting money on credit cards. Um, so we ended up with $124,000 in debt when I shut that business down, including a car loan. So, you know, kind of, you know, still $100,000. Yeah. Um, but we still owed that money. So, we we really sat down um, and started thinking about this. And, and a pivotal point for us is we went to this conference in Fargo, North Dakota called MisfitCon, which hasn't even happened in a couple of years, but it was this amazing handcrafted curated event in Fargo, North Dakota of all places. Yeah. And I was actually a speaker of the first year and you didn't know who the speakers were when you got there. It was like this really cool event. Cool, and I wish they were doing it. <laughs> I know. It's so amazing. It's such a great event, like literally life changing. Um, but one of the guys that we heard talk was Joshua Fields Milburn from The Minimalists. Mm -hmm. And I was so inspired by his story because he said things like I was over $100,000 in debt. I was chasing all these big financial goals. I was trying to like level up all the time. I was trying to scale business, all this stuff. I'm like, whoa, 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 that's me, you know, like I'm buying material things, all this stuff. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. And so I started talking to him after his talk. And I was like, how did you do this? And he was like, listen, there's no like, get out of jail free plan for this. And he was like, I just chipped away. I did these things. And and so Caroline and I sat down and we we're like, we need to build a plan for this, but we're never going to really get through it if we don't shift the way that we think. Because if we keep thinking like, woe is me, we have all this debt, this sucks. I have all these memories attached to this money with this business that failed. Yeah. Like you're never going to want to tackle it. So we literally shifted it from, this is like a game of Donkey Kong and like, Donkey Kong at the top throwing barrels is like the debt and every barrel we can jump over is like us chipping away and, and paying off some of it. And we didn't continue to use that metaphor because it yeah. would have been super weird and like all that. But so a couple <laughs> of the highlights of the things that we did that are really important. Number one, we had weekly budget meetings. So every single week we confronted how much money was coming in, how much money was coming out and how much money we were trying to pay down for our debt. Um, the second thing we did is we were ruthless with our expenses. So there are really two ways to get out of debt. You yeah. spend less money or you make more money. Yeah. And two of those things combined gives you the fastest path to get out of debt. And so we went through every single thing we had on our credit cards that we were paying for on a recurring basis, saw what we could chop, saw what we could change. And I found over $10,000 a year that we could get rid of 
And yeah. some of it was as difficult as calling credit card companies and saying, I can't afford to pay this balance. So two things can happen. I can default on this and you can try and chase me down and I'm never going to be able to afford it. Or do you have some way to help me? And almost every credit card ha company has what's called a hardship case. Mm. And they basically say, we'll freeze your card so you can't use it. But if you're maxed out, who cares? You can't use it anyway. Um, we'll drop the percentage way low, sometimes to zero, which is what I had. And then we'll build it back up over time so that you have a little bit of leeway to be able to continue to pay because they, they want your money. They don't want mm. you to not pay. Yeah. So that's a huge chunk of this. That was like $5,000 a year in just interest that we got to get away from because we made these difficult phone calls. Yeah. Um, so th that was a really big part of this was looking at all of our expenses, doing other things. And so the other part was basically saying, how can we make more money? How can we leverage the things that we have? How can we bundle up products that we have and do kind of like one-time deals or interesting you know, ways that we can sell stuff and then not take that money and go, we're going to Tahiti, but like this money all gets applied to our debt. And it sucks when you make, let's say, like $20,000 off of some cool bundle thing that we came up with together. Like we came up with this thing called the Vibrant Stuff Bundle. Yeah. And it made $20,000 the first time we did it. And it was awesome. But we were like, all of that money goes right to our debt. And it's not fun, but right. neither is having that debt and that debt continuing to hold you down and weigh on your shoulders. And I will tell you, there is no greater feeling financially that I've had over the years. And I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've, you know, gotten, you know, really big sponsors, really cool people, really cool projects. Yeah. Nothing has felt better for me than paying off that last credit card. Oh, I can't man. even explain it. I can't no, explain how great it feels to know. And, and I wish everyone could know that if you get to that point, it's so empowering because then you're like, all right, I know how to win this game. I, I have to be ruthless with my expenses. I have to confront my money at every turn because this whole system that we live in is not set up for you to do those things. It's right. set up for you to be like, oh, I have a credit card. I don't think about that. I'll set it to pay the minimums, uh, whatever. My bank account, like all the transactions get delayed for like a day or two. So I don't even know what's going, you know, and it's, yeah. unless you're really looking at it, it's really tough. So, what? so the debt thing for me, you know, it was a really interesting time in our lives, but it has bared so much fruit and I would not go back and change getting into that debt because it has just changed us completely. Totally. And I know there are probably people listening who, you know, they're like newer entrepreneurs and so they're adamantly just like investing in all the yeah. things, the coaches, the courses, et cetera, and they're not seeing a return. So they're, they're, accruing more and more debt but they're like how do i make more money without investing more into like facebook ads and this do you have any advice for people like that i mean it's gonna sound really weird but no matter what stage you're at you already know enough mm -hmm. like you don't need another course you don't need to buy anything from me they don't need to buy anything from you like they don't need to yeah. buy anything from anybody you don't need a mentor you don't need any of this stuff you need to sit down and go what do I know? What do I want to do? How can I change people's lives? How can I create some value exchange, which is all the business is? And how can I start doing that in the smallest, best way that I can without all these bells and whistles and software products and all this stuff? And let me just do that and see what happens. And I think for so many people, that's so scary. And so they try and arm themselves with all this knowledge. Like, yeah. oh, I don't know about building an online course. So I'm going to go buy all the things. About building. Listen, building an online course is like writing a blog post that just paginates. Like mm -hmm. that's all it is. It's just like multiple blog posts constructed in a different format. And I think that so many people fill the um, self-doubt that they have with all of these things. And that is never going to get rid of the self-doubt. That'll give you maybe some tips and tactics and tricks, but those things aren't what's going to create a sustainable set of income or sustainable yeah. business for you, what's going to get rid of that self-doubt because it's gotten rid of it for me, it's gotten rid of it for my wife, it's gotten rid of it for thousands of people that we've been able to impact over the years is actually doing the thing you want to do mm. and learning from that process. Yeah, It's not a mentor, it's not a coach, it's not anything anyone can do. Those things are helpful, like I said in the very beginning, of when you get to a sticking point and you can't move forward, but you have to actually get it as far as you can before you do those things. And I think for a lot of people, your example is really great for the book. A lot of people don't write the 50,000 words. Mm. They write 500 and then they stop. And they're like, I'm at my stopping point. It's like, no, you're not. You're yeah. at like a difficult point. You need to push forward. You need to get to a place where you've exhausted every single thing you can try, every single thing you can do, and you've actually done stuff. Then you go, okay, now I need help. But you don't fill all that self-doubt bucket with all these things because those things are not going to do it and, until you actually like sit in the chair, do the work, and see what happens. 
So one of the reasons that I was really excited to chat is because I know that you all are in the process of combining your businesses. And um, I know that for some of my listeners and for me personally, one of the things that has held me up, I'm owning that that's an excuse, is that I'm spread on a lot of different projects. You know, the book, yep. relaunching Bold Life Business School, my coaching, trying to launch retreats. And I don't currently have the support that I once did or that I would like to have. So mm-hmm. I'm curious, how do you all prioritize your time on the projects? And what are the essential hires, especially if there isn't a huge budget for it? Yeah. So what's really interesting about where we are, so just to catch everybody up, because they haven't probably, they don't know anything. They haven't um, read all the blog posts that I have. Yeah, they, they, they haven't gone into the deep dive of Jason Zook, uh, which I don't recommend either. It's super <laughs> weird. Um, so my wife and I are combining our three of our businesses into one. So I have a personal kind of business insight called Jason Does Stuff. My wife has made Vibrant. And then we have Buy Our Future, which has been kind of our latest offering together that was kind of crazy. But anyway, we we are looking at this and we're basically saying it's too much. There's too many things. We can't juggle all these balls as much as we want to. It's just too difficult because every time you add a new thing, guess what? Something else has to give for that time because you only have so much time that you can apply to all the stuff you're working on, yeah. even if you outsource, even if you have people working on things. Um, so what we're doing is we're starting this new business called Wandering Aimfully, and it is everything that we're doing wrapped into one business. It's both of the things that we would write about in one place. It's all of our projects not being sold individually, but being sold under a monthly membership. So Mm -hmm. you can purchase it and you get access to my six software products, our combined 15 online courses, a bunch of guides, a bunch of books, this community of 450 people that we've built through this Buy Our Future project over the years, uh, direct access to us, and then a whole bunch of other things. Like these, We're building these roadmaps to like step-by-step step get you through some difficult things that people might be stuck on. Mm. Um, and, and I don't recommend anyone buying this if they're just getting started and they bought a whole bunch of things and they haven't done anything yet. So don't buy it. That's my like disclosure. Um, yeah. But if you have done stuff and you're like, listen, I do, you know, I have been doing design business for a while. I've been doing, you know, client work for a while. I want to turn myself into like a product based business or at least have a side business with that. Wandering Aimfully is going to be perfect for you because you're going to be armed with every single thing you need. But if you're just getting started, sure, it can help. But I don't want to be the person that takes more money from you. I would rather you do that. So anyway, just disclosure. Um, but the way that we're building this and way that we're thinking about this is we want to take all of those things like you just talked about. And we want them to be in one thing that we can focus all of our time and energy. And and a big shift for us was reading the book Essentialism. Mm. And I don't know if anybody hasn't read it. Uh, they should absolutely read it by Greg McEwen. But there's one visual that you can think about. So if you picture a circle and a bunch of arrows going into that circle in all directions, that's the majority of us. Yeah. Our time is just shooting off, our focus shooting off in all these directions. And that's okay. You, I think you actually, it's good to go through that part of your life and business at some point. But then there's this other circle that he shows that has one longer arrow that's just going toward one directive. And that to us is where we are moving toward. And we really just believe that if we can put all our energy into that, we've learned so much of what we've done. I think that thinking can work for people in the beginning, if you're just at the like the, the right after the beginning stages, or if you're further down the road like we are and you have all these businesses and all these products, that you can go into the focus mode And what you have to do is you have to get over the fear of, well, what if no one wants this one thing that I offer? Then I had all these other things where they had a chance to buy. You can't think like that. Instead, you have to think, okay, well, then that wasn't for that person. I need to find the person that it is for. Uh, And that for us is what we're willing to do. So, yeah, we're sharing the journey of this build over the course of five weeks. Uh, We're currently on, as of recording this, the business week. So uh, the first week was branding. Mm -hmm. The second week is business. The third week will be kind of website and design. The fourth week will be content and the fifth week will be marketing and launch. Uh, And the whole idea is that, like I said earlier on, we wish more people would show the behind the scenes of building these things, all of the parts, not just like the shiny, like here's the case study that I wrote for Medium and like it was tough and it was hard. It's like, no, here's a recording of our meeting where we actually argue about some of these points because we want you to see that you're going to have to do this in your business. Like you're gonna, even if it's arguing with yourself, you're going to run into these things. And that's the honest truth about what it takes. So, um, the I've very been long, loving them. It, what's that? I said, I've been loving them. The blog posts. Hey, I think Caroline's a great writer and I love her aesthetics. So, yeah. um, it's really fun for me. I'm sort of in like a refresh mm-hmm. phase in my business to see how you all are kind of starting from the beginning. 
Yeah. And so to get back to your, your original question too, of like, what do you do when you have all these, these other things? So yeah. what, what we did was we kind of listed out, and this was before we started this project, like all of these projects we're working on, how much money are they actually making? Mm. How much time are we actually spending? Not what's our theoretical time, but like really thinking about looking at our calendars going, wait, when do we block up all this time? And if you don't know, you should definitely start tracking it so you can find out because you can lose a lot of time and money that way. And then the last column, which I think is probably the most important was, do I actually enjoy doing this? Mm -hmm. Because there were a couple projects on my list of like, pretty easy to do, makes pretty good money, but you know what? I really don't like the audience that attracts. I don't like the customer service I have to do. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Why am I still doing this? I run my own business. I'm making myself like work for people I don't want to work for. Why, why am I doing this? Yeah. And I think going through that exercise really showed us like, okay, we can cut the retreats. We can re cut the the course. We, you know, it's like you go through and you go, I don't, I don't want to do any of those things. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to do one. And within that, there will be a retreat option. And people who have already paid you for things are so much more willing to pay you for other things as opposed to starting a new thing and trying to attract a new audience at all these different, it's the arrows again, you know, totally. it's like you're trying to do all this stuff as opposed to just saying like, Hey, customer who bought X, I'm doing something similar and you're already a customer, but I'm only showing it to you. Like this isn't a public facing thing. It's only available to my customers. Do you guys want to be a part of this? And so you start to build like this one business that kind of rules them all as we've been thinking about this. And then it's, it's supported by other things within it um, as potential other ways to make money. So I guess in the, and I'm going to follow up with that other question about the essential hires as well. Yes. Um, but even though it is one business now wandering aimfully, there are still all the moving parts of the website and the branding and the blog posts and the videos that you guys have and the social media. How are you prioritizing what in what order and who of, of the two of you is doing what? It is a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, it is. It, it's, it's so much work to document the building of something. Like if yeah. we were just building it, it would probably get done without a lot of stress, without a lot of issue, because we've been through this. We've built businesses before we built right. things. It's not a big deal. Um, but documenting as this whole other layer. Now, we're willing to put in that work because we know how much value it can bring people. Again, we want to put things out into the world that we wish existed. So we're willing to hunker down and do this. So there are a couple of things that are really helping us do this. One is the tools that we're using. So what we did is we used Asana, and uh, I'm going to recommend even before I say all these things, don't use all of these tools. I think you could probably just use one. I would say if you're building a project, Asana could probably be the one you could use okay. for all of this stuff. Um, we used Asana and their card view, which I think is called Kanban. 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 Yeah. I don't know. It's with a K. Why isn't it like fancy, you know? Um, <laughs> But uh, so you have all the cards where we basically brain dumped all the things. And that's kind of where we came up with the like branding week, website week, you know, that that thing. It's yeah. like, oh, we looked at that. We're like, oh, let's chunk these into weeks. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, let's get organized. We, yeah, yeah, really. Well, then we go into these bigger chunks and we go, OK, what are the sub lists within here? So mm -hmm. we kind of make these little sub lists within these big chunks. Um, then we personally and again, I don't want to advocate everyone to do this because it's a lot of work. We created a content calendar in Airtable where oh, Caroline went know. just super nuts in air table. She is yeah. just obsessed. We are going to, we are going to like make that company rich on just yeah. how much we talk about it. I, don't I would not make love true. to air table if that was a thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, I think Caroline may have stayed up late a couple nights <laughs> at the wine, turned on some Barry White. Get it, girl. Her, but like, you know, um, <laughs> So you guys can start that club if you want, the, the Airtable Love Club. Uh, so we go into Airtable and we've made a content calendar where we've listed out every single date, what posts we want. And we did this beforehand. So we're not doing this on the fly. We spent like a whole day planning out what we would do. Mm -hmm. And then we assigned like Jason could obviously write all the business posts because I'm more business minded. Mm -hmm. Caroline would write all the branding posts because she's more branding minded. Um, for the website design stuff, we're going to probably cut those in half. For the content stuff, we're going to cut those in half. Mm -hmm. Marketing and launch, probably all me. That's what I do. So we looked at all that. And then we also looked at, okay, we're filming these videos. Well, what does that look like? And some of it's just recording a meeting. So that's easy. We set up a tripod. Yeah. We're actually using my iPhone. I set up a mic and it's just a pretty easy video. Now we have these other more in-depth videos that we want to do. And those take a little more planning and editing. But funny enough, as of recording this, we wanted to film one last week. That was how we worked together as a husband and wife. We got to the end of the week and we were just dead tired. And we were supposed to film on a Friday afternoon, which we learned that's a horrible time for us to film. Like we're just, yeah, we're done. We're spent. Um, 
Yeah. So instead of forcing ourselves to do that, we looked at the hierarchy of priorities of things that mattered and we said, this can wait. And and I want to actually flip on a camera, super simple setup and then talk and go, here's why we're not doing this video, because we hit a breaking point and we needed to make the decision of what had to give this video had to give like we would have just worked ourselves too far. Um, so as we lay all of those things out, I think this leads naturally into your other question, which is like, who does all the things? Yeah. And so we're a two person team. Like it's just us. We don't have a bunch of assistants. We don't have a bunch of people. So Caroline's doing all the design. She's doing all the branding. You know, I'm doing all the kind of business stuff, setting all that stuff up. But the video editing? Feel, yeah, I'm doing all the video editing. Wow. Yep. Good job. Yeah, thank you. Well, I took a five year break from videos after doing 1600 over the course of five years. Whoa. That was that burned me out for quite a while. So I've recovered. Yeah. I'm okay. Uh, but Your I really was full again. While. Yeah, like I would I would open a camera to like film a video. And I'm like, I can't do it. Like, I just feel terrible. I just don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, and there was real there was really no reason to do it. This right. this there is reason we're finding value in it. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing all the video editing. But where we are offloading some of the work is um, I have someone who's done some admin work, you could call him a virtual assistant, but it's not been a consistent thing. Mm -hmm. And I sent him our two sites and I said, hey, Jason does the Jason does stuff and made vibrant. Can you write every single post that we have, write the URL and then try and lump them into similar categories if you can just try that. Mm. He did that work for us. It took him six hours. It's six hours we didn't have to do. He charged $20 an hour. I am so happy to pay someone $120 to not do that admin work because yeah. I have to do other things. Um, the development for this site, I have a friend who knows WordPress really well. We, we've worked with him on a couple things. Um, he's gonna be building all the backend stuff. But he ran into a roadblock of, I don't know how to do these things you want to do. So I had to then go and find another person mm -hmm. who's gonna help support those things. But these are the things where I just firmly believe when you're building anything, you are going to run into this stuff. Yeah. And you have to be willing to say from the beginning, I know I'm going to run into these problems. I'm willing to solve them. I'm not going to let them completely derail me. Um, and if you're not willing to do that, then it's just a very difficult task at hand for you already. So all that being said, it's mostly us doing everything. Uh, we're outsourcing some of the technical bits. We're outsourcing some of the admin bits. Um, and from there, it's really just prioritizing every single day. We have a morning meeting every day. I think I mentioned that where we go over what we what we're doing. And we look at it a couple different ways. So it's like, yeah. what's the life stuff that we do first that we need to do? Like take our dog. He's going to physical therapy a couple times a week now. So we have to do that. Um, and we look at, okay, what are the big chunks of things we're trying to get done today? And then how can we break those down into hourly blocks on our calendar? And then like, what does each of us need help with? So how can I support Carolyn? How can she support me? Yeah. Uh, most of the time it's me supporting her because she's doing the bulk of the work right now. Uh, and then from there, it's trying to have some gratitude for each other as well. I read and as, that. I love that. Is, is, yeah, as cheesy as it sounds to be like, hey, babe, I love you. You're doing a great job. Um, I think it really, I mean, this is Caroline's idea, not mine. But I think it really does help because I can feel that like when you force yourself to say that, you're like, no, but that's true. Like yeah. I really do feel that way and I'm glad I'm on this journey with you and that's really helpful. Um, I don't know if your listeners are going to do that like with a VA to be like, hey, I love you. You're so great. How are the Philippines? <laughs> Everything's so good? Okay, great. Let's move on. You know? like How's the fam? If you want to, uh, sure, try it. Um, but it is, I, I will just say, it's a very it's a very cumbersome process. This is a lot of work. We have bit off a lot of of to do's mm -hmm. and a lot of hours, but we're willing to invest it because it's like I said earlier, we know that this investment is what it will take for us to be successful and get to this number that we want to get to, which is not I don't think very high for what people would think we want to get to. Yeah. Which I'm to share um, that that's what it's going to take for us to get there as quickly as possible, not overnight, not in the first month or whatever, but we're laying all the groundwork for that. And how do you all switch from uh, business partner mode to like romance mode? <laughs> What's the transition there? Def define romance. <laughs> You're like, did I mention yeah. we are married? <laughs> oh no, it froze. Yeah, it's, oh yeah, it, is it back? Yeah, you're back. Hello, hello. I'm back. Okay, what'd you say? Repeat what you said. Um, how do you all transition from work partner mode to like sexy time, romance, husband yeah. and wife mode? I think it's like anything else, like something has to give. Mm -hmm. And the sexy time romance stuff has given for these mm -hmm. couple of weeks. And I think part of that is not because we don't want to have sexy time romance. I mean, we've been together for eight years now too. So you yeah. also were at a comfortable place like... Hey everybody, we're not having sex every night, just so everyone knows. Like, and if you're eight years in a relationship and you are, 
I want to read your book. Yeah. Like, just Thanks. tell me all the things that you're doing. Um, <laughs> but I think what we have done is that we've we've made effort to go on walks together, to go to coffee shops, to um, at night watch Planet Earth or something together, and just have some times of detachment where we can be together. And unfortunately, we're so entrenched in this. And this is so much of our life anyway. It's not something we're building just because we want to build a business. It's like, right. this is where we live, that we do find ourselves talking about it. But we also are trying to be mindful of the fact that if we talk about it every second of every day, it's going to drive us insane. So we're just trying to do little things. But I mean, truthfully, and I don't know if it's a really bad thing to say, but like romance is just something that we're kind of putting on hold. And we still like hug each other, hold yeah. hands, give each other a kiss. But like, you know, working up for all the bedtime magic, like we're both spent at the end of every day. Yeah. And instead it's like a kiss on the cheek, read the Kindle for a few minutes. We're like a 90 year old couple. And then we go to sleep and that's just what we know is going to happen for these next couple of weeks. And we're willing to kind of make that sacrifice because we also know we've worked in these environments before where we've had like crunch time for a couple right. weeks and we can come back out of it and then go, okay, now let's reconnect. Like we don't have to focus on all of this. Yeah. Um, and I think that's actually better for us as a couple, maybe not for everybody. Um, but to say like, we're okay just to put it off because we know we're going to come back to it and we will make an effort to reconnect as opposed to trying to force it into like, we had a tense meeting in the morning, but tonight, like we have to get it on no matter yeah. what, you know, like you, you force that into the relationship. And I don't think that's really healthy at all. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Is there anything else that you want to say about wandering aimfully? Because I, I have so many more questions, but we're getting close on time. Oh, well, who sets this time? This is our time is completely made up now. Um, <laughs> My GK. No, I, no, I think the thing for me, like our big mantra is trying to come up with a way that you think about work supporting the life that you want, mm. um, not having it the other way around. So not putting like work at the epicenter and then you live outside of your work. It's like, yeah. no, we put life first and work supports all the things we want to do. We call this working to live. Mm. And this is a big kind of mantra and mindset that we will continue to push forward with Wandering Aimfully. And I just wish that more people would take the time to think about this as well. And if you want to read, if you're if you're a, an action taker and you like doing things, you can go to jasondoesstuff.com slash working. And I think that will forward it. So just jasondoesstuff.com slash working. Um, that's our full like process on this working to live thing and it's about prioritizing your life first whether you have kids a nine-to-five yeah. job it doesn't matter it's about changing your mindset and it's also about financial um like boundaries that you set and that's for your business that's for yourself um, and i just think that so many people don't talk about that in a way where people can go oh this isn't confusing this is really simple i just list these things out i make a couple of sacrifices i do these things and i get real and honest about what i actually want in my life um, because i think that's the thing for me that wandering aimfully is is hopefully going to be something that that does for people in the future is it removes all the societal pressures and goals that we all get so bought into what yeah. i just called like MTV cribs goals like a, ha a huge house, a million dollars in your bank account, a Ferrari, like w those things don't matter, you know, and what it takes to get some of those things is not worth the reward of actually getting them. Yeah. And what is really great is becoming debt free. What is really great is having a business where you really love working on it. And I do think every single person can create that for themselves. And if you're listening to this and you're shaking your head and you're like, oh, that's only for you. I'm sorry that you feel that way. Like, I'm sorry that you've been presented with circumstances that have made you feel that way. But I'm here to tell you as a nobody from Florida who 12 years ago just quit a really good design job to start doing weird shit on the Internet. Anyone can do it. It's yeah. certainly not easy. No. It's not the passive income thing that everyone wants to sell you in their courses online. Um, but if you build something that, like I said, is the exchange of value where you can give value to people, they can get value, they give you money in return and you just continue to be helpful or useful to them, that will reap rewards and benefits for years to come. And that's just what we believe. Um, and that's the that's the wandering aimfully kind of ethos in itself. And, and then there's the whole idea of the wandering part, which is we explore and we do things yeah. differently and whatever. But we do that with intention and we do that with a goal and we do that with an outcome that we want. Um, and that's the aimfully part. And, and we kind of do that together. And, and we hope that that attracts people who are feeling like, I'm tired of reading all these stupid business blogs. I'm tired of reading all these people who want me to be a celebrity influencer. Yeah. You know, the shit like that. None of that actually matters. What matters is that, like you have a life that you really enjoy and a business that supports that life. And it's mainly, I have two more questions about yeah. um, wandering aimfully. And then I want to wrap up with my um, every episode questions. So wandering aimfully is primarily geared towards people who want to create products, correct? 
I would say that we have the majority of, of experience creating products, cool. both software products, online courses, et cetera. But I really think it's also for people, and this is just what I've learned from the people who've purchased the Buyer Future products, which is what we're turning into Wandering Infly, Yeah, is it's people who that they want a creative community to lean on and to be a part of that it, and that's not focused on making six figures every month, that's not focused on living on a beach and working from your laptop every day, because you just can't do that. Like saying it's in a laptop, it's hard to see a laptop on the beach. I know. Like it's hot. You've, you've done it. You've tried I've done, it. I did it for two years, and I was like, it's hot. It's hot on my lap. And it's not as great as everyone makes it seem. Like It's fun for the photo, but then you're like, I got to go back inside. Where's the air conditioning? Yeah, I can't um, see my screen because of the sun. Yeah, I just think that it, you mentioned the word support earlier. Like, I think so much of what the Wandering Aimfully community is going to be is like a support group for creative entrepreneurs. Mm. Um, also for people who just want to build an intentional life for themselves. So it's, yes, the business side. And we give you specific actionable things that you can do. And we've seen so many of our members do that have brought them financial return and built mm. stable businesses for themselves. But it's also just the life stuff as well. And I just think that that blend is a really cool thing that we're trying to do that is hard, uh, but we're really hopeful that it will be that for creative entrepreneurs. And how are people who have already purchased by your future merging into Wandering Aimfully? What does that look yeah, like? Yeah, so I kind of have this this ethos in life that like if you've already bought something from me and I'm changing that thing, you should never have to be charged again. Mm -hmm. Whether that's like a software product that you've been paying, you know, fifteen dollars a month, and now we've made it forty nine dollars, which I did with like our online course platform. Yeah. Like we still have people paying a, a plan that doesn't exist because I'm never going to upcharge them. I just don't believe in it. Yeah. Uh, so for our buyer future members, they bought buy our future with this idea that they would pay us once and they would never pay for anything in the future. And that's what we told them. That's what I believe. So when I sent the email that we were changing this to Wandering Aimfully, I got so many replies from people that were like, wait, what? Like, I don't have to pay for this. And I'm like, what part of buy our future did you not get? Like the whole point was you would, so they're all going to be the first members of Wandering Aimfully, which yeah. is cool for us because as I've kind of had this plan all along, like this is my beta group of users for anything I create. Yeah. And now it's 450 very diverse, very talented, very creative, very supportive, very helpful people who are hungry to do their own Wandering Aimfully. Um, and they're there to support in the journey. So I love that because when people are going to join Wandering Aimfully as we open it up in like the next month, there's already a whole bunch of people. Like you're yeah, not going to show amazing. up being like, I'm the first at the, par at the party. Is anybody yeah. here? You're like, hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah. Uh, so I, I really am excited about that. And they're, they're such a great group. And we've heard from so many people who have bought into other, you know, like B school and other things. And I have nothing bad to say about those products, but everyone comes back to us like, this is the best community I've ever been a part of. That's amazing. And I, and I have nothing I can say that we have done for that other than thank you person, because you're the reason that happens. Like I, I'm not the reason I'm just the one who manages things and make sure people don't post weird gifs, you know, like yeah, that's all yeah. I, I'm actually the one posting the weird GIF, so I have to like police myself every day. I'm like, no, that's inappropriate. Can't yeah. do it. Yeah, you guys can't post these because yeah, that's you, my yeah. role. Yeah, I, then I delete. Anyway, <laughs> I love it. Uh, as a former community manager, I take pride in in your success cultivating that strong community because I know that it's hard. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's an, it's an ever evolving thing. Like it's its own organism, if you will, where, you know, you want it to do a certain thing and then it like goes a completely different way and you're like, Oh, oops. Um, but I think for us, we really want to start focusing on that. And it's one of our goals is to hire a community manager at some point is someone who will probably actually come from the community. I fully believe yeah. that that will happen, um, that they're entrenched in it. They love it, that we can provide income for them. They can provide value. They can be the champion and, and they can support people on an individual basis, which I think is just amazing. Um, and that's why community managers exist and that's why it's a whole uh, thing. So we're really excited to get to a point where we can afford to do those things and yeah. we're definitely planning for it. Oh, and one other thing that's, that we're doing with Wandering Infly, I just want to mention because I really like it, is that we're going to send packages in the mail to people, <gasps> like quarterly packages, because I just really believe believe that mail sucks these days and so rarely do you get like something really fun in the mail yeah I just went and checked the mail because my birthday's on Thursday and I was like praying that it, there would be a card mm, or something yeah, that's yeah. not a bill or yeah crap and there was so in case anyone's like yeah nice <laughs> there you go that's awesome dream achieved yes so 
just to give you a little background, we were talking offline about how we had a mutual friend, the boys over yes. at Manal, and I met them because I was a member of an entrepreneur community that they were a part of. And oh, cool. I networked my way in really aggressively when I still had a nine to five job. And so when they were hiring for a community manager, I stood out because I was like, I want to be friends with everyone. I love this nice. community. Get me out of America. And so that's why <laughs> they hired me and I loved it. So I think that hiring from within is a great move. Yeah. And we both love Manal. So just shout out to Manal. Like shout if anybody is thinking like, yeah, I really yeah. need a good travel bag. Manal. M-I-N-A-A-L.com. That's not my affiliate link. That's just the link you can use because we both love it. So <laughs> go buy it. And uh, we'll link that in the show notes as well as the episode of the Bold Life Movement podcast with Jimmy Hayes from the Manal brand. Nice. I love Jimmy. He's yeah, so great. Those he's Kiwis, those crazy Kiwis. The best. So at the end of every episode, I ask two questions. The first of which is, how do you define being bold? What does it mean to you to live a bold life? Yeah, I mean, it's it's easy for me to say do things differently because I have a book about Mission. that. But that, yeah, that truthfully has been it for me for as long as I can remember is just seeing the way things are done and then thinking like, this is not the way things have to be done. Mm. And I think that applies to if you have an online course about finance or design or something that you're just like, oh, this is so boring. Make it not boring. Make it interesting. Make it unique. Um, and I think anything that you're doing in life, you can do differently and it can provide you so much value. And so for me, it's just being willing to go, I want to do something differently more than I fear what it takes to actually do it or the potential failure of it because yeah. I'm going to get so much personal value and satisfaction out of that. Um, so yeah, I think, and, and you know, and <laughs> being bold is also shutting down three businesses that are working well and functioning well and going, but we believe there's a bigger thing here that people can get behind that, that motivates people. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a, it's a bold move. Some might say stupid move, but <laughs> we're open for the challenge. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. Yeah. And lastly, Jason, what is your why? Yeah, this one's interesting. This has changed for me constantly over the years. Um, I think for me, my personal why is that I now know that I can be the source for someone to see, oh, I'm inspired by that Looney Tunes person who does all these weird things. And like, my idea isn't so weird. Mm -hmm. You know, my thing that I'm chasing isn't so big or ostentatious. Um, I should just go and do that thing. And also, I have me, I have no skills whatsoever. So like if I can pull these things off, so can anybody else. And so I think just trying to be, uh, you know, a little bit of a, an example for people that they can do these things is, is really kind of fun. And I wouldn't have known that years ago, you know, yeah. I would have been that for people. Um, but I also think as we move forward now, kind of my why is just showing people that life and work can blend together and that life should come first and work should sh support your work. And we're still trying to figure out how to do that. So I'm yeah. a little, you know, the waters are a little cloudy on how to describe what that is, but we're going to figure that out and I'm open to the journey to do that. Um, so, you know, I think part of that for me is just that kind of mindset as well. Well, I love the transparent nature that you all have with Wandering Aimfully. Catching up on what you've done so far was so fun for me and I'm definitely going to continue following along. So we'll have awesome. links to all of that in the show notes. And Very cool. It was so fun getting to chat. I, I can't wait to hear how things go with the lunch. Yeah, very excited. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And if anybody wants to reach out, if they have any questions or thoughts, I am always open to it. Um, would love hear, to hear from your your audience and What's the best keep, place? keep talking about all the weird things. Um, probably wandering aimfully at this point because everything's okay. going to turn into that. So okay. um, if you can't figure out how to contact us, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> um, but if you, uh, yeah, it, it just you can reach out to us in some way and, and we'd be happy to, to help out in whatever way we can. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Thank you so much. And there you have it. Thank you so much to Jason for coming on today's episode of the Bold Life Movement. Was he not super fun? I'm so excited to see Wandering Aimfully continue to unfold over the coming weeks. Again, you can get the links to that as well as all the other resources from today's episode at theboldlifemovement.com slash 078. And if you liked today's episode, please go ahead and drop me a comment over on Instagram. You can catch me at the Bold Life Movement. As always, be bold, be you, and have an amazing week.